Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. I've always loved the water. As a kid, my dad would take me out fishing on his little aluminum boat. The feeling of gliding across the lake with the wind in my hair was pure joy. As I got older, I dreamed of having my own speedboat to zip around on. I worked hard and finally bought my baby, a sleek 25-foot cruiser perfect for lakes and rivers. When my wife and I bought our house, I was thrilled to see it was on a sprawling lake. Finally, a place to enjoy my prized possession. The first summer there was fantastic. We explored the lake, had friends over for boat parties, and made great memories. That next fall, my neighbor Hank mentioned our homeowners association was planning some renovations. New mailboxes, landscaping, stuff like that, seemed harmless enough. Hank was the HOA president and a nice enough guy. I agreed it would be good to spruce the place up. With winter coming, I tarped my boat and stowed it on blocks in the far back corner of my property near the lake access point. No one ever went back there, so I figured it was a perfect spot. I headed south for a few months to escape the cold. When I returned in the spring, I was horrified to find my boat missing. My boat vanished into thin air. I frantically searched the property, thinking maybe I misremembered where I left it. But no, the tattered tarp lay in the exact spot I stowed the boat. Furious, I marched over to Hank's place. When he answered the door, I was seeing red. Hank! My boat is missing! It was right there on my property all winter! What the hell happened? Hank held up his hands innocently. Whoa there! Let's not jump to conclusions! Are you sure you didn't have it hauled somewhere for maintenance? I'm damn sure I didn't! It was right there on blocks under that tarp! Okay, okay, no need to yell. As part of the HOA renovations, we did some land clearing back there. We figured that old boat was abandoned junk. I'll have to check the records, but I believe it was disposed of properly. I wanted to scream. That boat was not abandoned. I have the title right inside my house. Your work crew stole my property. Hank shook his head. Now don't go making accusations. Our crew was just following orders. We were told to clear out anything that looked unwanted. But let me make some calls, and I'll figure this out. I didn't believe that innocent act for one second. Hank knew exactly what happened to my boat. But without proof, I had to play nice for now. Over the next few weeks, I gathered every scrap of evidence about my boat. The purchase paperwork, registration, maintenance records, photos, everything. I also started talking to my other neighbors. Turns out the HOA had overstepped their bounds on other projects, too. Tearing down sheds, removing gardens, way more than their stated plans. I had a growing suspicion this was a pattern. Finally, Hank set up a meeting to discuss my missing boat. He brought the HOA's lawyer along, too, of course. The lawyer went on and on about how the HOA acted properly under some bylaw that gives them authority over abandoned property. He droned in legalese about how they made a reasonable determination my boat was junk. When it was my turn, I presented every shred of evidence proving it was my personal property on my land. Registration with the latest insurance renewal. Photos of me and my family using it. No reasonable person could conclude that boat was abandoned. You could see beads of sweat forming on Hank's forehead. His lawyer tried to counter, but it was clear my evidence was solid. After grilling me for an hour looking for any holes in my story, the lawyer finally caved. I believe there's been a grave misunderstanding here, he said. While the HOA was well within its rights, I will speak to them about reimbursing you for the misplaced property. Reimburse me? I didn't want money. I wanted my boat back. But it was clear these snakes would never admit what they did. I had no choice but to accept the payout. In the end, I got a decent check. Nowhere near the full value, but a good chunk. I guess the HOA didn't want a lawsuit on their hands. As I deposited that check, a plan started brewing in my mind. If the HOA wanted to take from me, maybe it was time I returned the favor. Over the next year, I started noticing when Hank and other HOA cronies went out of town. Once their houses were empty, I enlisted my brother-in-law, who owns a landscaping company, to come do work at my place. Would you believe sometimes his crew removes the wrong trees? Sometimes they dig holes in the wrong backyards, clumsy them. Last month, Hank's prized antique hot tub disappeared right out of his screened-in porch. What a bizarre coincidence. The HOA sure has bad luck with things going missing, don't they? At our last HOA meeting, Hank brought up needing more security cameras because of all this theft. He seemed paranoid, looking at me while he talked. I just smiled and nodded along. Maybe if Hank was less focused on his missing stuff, He'd notice work crews at vacant HOA board members' houses more often than seems normal, but I'm sure it's just an odd coincidence. One thing's for sure, 
I'll be keeping a close eye on my remaining property, though I don't have room for a new speedboat these days. I sold my house last month and bought a nice condo downtown. No homeowners association for me ever again. The next one is a pro-revenge story. I grew up on a horse ranch in Colorado. We had a long piece of property, about 80 acres, and we raised Missouri fox trotters. We had lived there for almost 20 years when some folks bought a strip of property way at the back of our land. It was a strange plot of land as it was very narrow and was sandwiched between our back fence and a busy county road. We were surprised anyone would buy it, actually, as it forced the house to be pretty close to the said road. Well, we never met these new neighbors until one day my dad gets a notice from a lawyer telling us that after having surveyed the property lines, our back fence encroaches on their property between three and six inches, depending on the spot along the fence line. These folks had never met us, never introduced themselves. Our first introduction was this legal demand. My father was a salt-of-the-earth kind of man, very kind, but also very strong-willed. He called these folks, arranged a meet-up, and tried to talk some sense into them. First, did three to six inches really matter that much, and why had they not come to us to talk it through? He even offered a number of different compromises. These folks were hostile from the get-go. They demanded he move the fence immediately or they would sue. Apparently the law stated they had to put their house so far away from our fence line, and they wanted to push it as far back from the road as they could when they built it, so they wanted that six inches very badly. I still remember when my dad got home from the meeting. He hung his hat up and shook his head when he told my mom in his slow way. Well, looks like we got the kind of folks for neighbors you don't ever want to have for neighbors. They sued and won, and we were forced to move the fence in two weeks. I say we because I was the free slave labor as all farm kids are in this kind of thing. All that fencing material and the time were a big cost for my family. But we got the work done in early spring. Here is where the fun comes in. So the new neighbors broke ground and built all through the end of winter and into spring. The very next weekend after they had moved into their house, Dad rousted me out of bed and we took the big truck into town to the lumber yard. I was extremely puzzled as we loaded up a bunch of fencing material and building supplies. We didn't have any big projects going that I knew about and I kept asking him what it was for, but he just told me to wait and see with a devilish smile on his face. We built a pen and a small enclosure very near our back property line, directly behind the neighbor's new shiny house. The next day, one of our farm friends delivered a half dozen pigs to their new home. Dan insisted on feeding those hogs table scraps and all the things that would go in the composter as well as some good balanced hog feed to keep them healthy. Now you may not know this, but the smell of pig excrement is directly related to what they eat and their pen. Table scraps make them smell bad. I mean bad. I had to drive the four-wheeler back there every day to take care of them, and within a month halfway there and my eyes would start watering it smelled so bad. When we mucked out the pen with the bobcat, we also made the pile right next to the pen. I can't even imagine how bad the smell was living in that house. The neighbors, of course, freaked out, and again, without ever even trying to talk to us, went the legal route. They lost. The area was zoned agricultural, and my dad had done his homework to make sure he was breaking no laws or regulations. The pigs were far enough from us and our other neighbors that it didn't bother anyone but the people he wanted it to bother. Come fall, when winter moved in, we sold the pigs to slaughter, and Dad stacked up a bunch of building supplies next to the pen and let the neighbors know we would be expanding the profitable operation in the spring when they came out to scream at him. He smiled the whole time, speaking in his slow, steady way. The new neighbors sold their new house in January when the ground was frozen and the new owners would not smell the pen. Though as soon as the old neighbors were gone, we tore down the enclosure, spread the nasty stuff on the hayfield, and the new neighbors never had any bad smell come spring. They also were great neighbors and are still lifelong friends. Never mess with a rancher. The next one is a petty revenge story. I was not the perpetrator of this petty revenge, only a witness. Preface. I love my family. Every member of my family is incredibly intelligent and has the capacity for great kindness. With that said, I do have one family member, my aunt, who is, well, a full-blown Karen, haircut and all. Setting. I was staying with my grandma for a weekend, and we decided to go visit my aunt, uncle, and my cousin. Uncle was out at work, so aunt, grandma, my younger cousin, and I decided to go out for lunch. We decided on Applebee's. For you non-Americans, Applebee's serves neither apples nor bees. They are an American restaurant and an edit regular bar that has many TVs that show sports but is definitely not a sports bar, per you get called out. 
When we arrived, we were seated at a table near the very crowded bar. We've recently been handed our menus when my aunt notices what's on the TVs attracting the large crowd. A wrestling match. Aunt. Waiter, could I grab you for a second, please? Waiter. Sure. Are you ready to order? Aunt. In a minute. Could you change the channel on the TV? Waiter. Uh, we have quite a few patrons watching that. If you want, we could try to reseat you. Aunt. No. We've already gotten our drinks and taken off our coats. Now please, my daughter is ten, and she doesn't need to be seeing that. Waiter. Silent. The waiter changes the channel to golf, and immediately every patron around that particular TV is glaring at us from the bar. At this time, my grandma and I were firmly horrified as my aunt had managed to not only piss off the restaurant staff, but a bunch of patrons. Shortly after, we order our food, which is delivered in a longer but not unreasonable amount of time. Grandma, cousin, and I dig in, enjoying our normal diner fare. Aunt then takes a bite of her food. Aunt, ugh, she spits out her food. Aunt, what the hell? Aunt, Bailey the nerd, Grandma, taste this. Sure enough, Aunt's food is about 90% salt and tastes like a big old mouthful of chewy ocean water. Me. Wow, Aunt, I can't believe that happened. Understanding immediately why our food tastes completely normal. Aunt. Does your food taste like that? Me. Nope. Definitely not quite that salty. Must have been a mistake from the kitchen. Aunt wastes no time in flagging down a waiter and complaining at length about the salt. She ends up returning it to the kitchen while angrily glaring at us eating our food. Her food returns. She goes to take another bite. It's just as salty. Her rage inflamed even more. She flags down a waiter. Aunt. Hey, what the goddamn hell? This is still salty. Waiter. If the dish is not to your taste, then I guess you don't like that dish. At this point, Anne is absolutely fuming and demands that we all leave. Grandma slash cousin slash. And I all quickly wolf down the little remaining on our plates as Aunt tells Grandma not to pay for Aunt's meal shortly before storming out of the restaurant. Grandma pays the bill and tips heavily. The next one is a malicious compliance story. I've been working at a local Safeway store for a little over eight months. Inside the Safeway, we have a Starbucks as soon as you walk in. I walk about 40 minutes to said Safeway every morning and every night. After my first week, I started to get an ice water once a day from the Starbucks, since no water was provided in the employee break room. Most of the workers at the Starbucks are kind and don't mind. Others are clearly annoyed. So annoyed that they complain to the manager, causing her to print out a new policy effective immediately. When on the clock, workers must pay $0.25 when requesting water of any size at Starbucks. This is to cover the cost of the cup, not for the water. A water bottle may be filled free of charge. I asked if it was all right if we brought our water bottles to fill up because I wanted to confirm. It was confirmed that any water bottle would do. So I bought a new water bottle and started having that filled. Everything was going well after two months until one annoyed barista decided, no more. She told me not to fill up my water bottle here anymore. I was confused and asked, what's the problem? She said that everyone here is annoyed having to fill up my water every day and that I never buy anything. I was stunned and said, all right then, sorry to bother you and have a nice day. Cue malicious compliance. Don't want to fill up my water, huh? All right then. So now every time before I clock in, I ask for three large ice waters. I don't care if they have a line or not. They can't refuse me. They can't charge me because I'm off the clock, and I'm a customer who is rather thirsty. I do this three times a day and share the waters with some of my fellow co-workers. It's been months now, and they've asked me to stop. But I won't. I made sure previously to wait until the line wasn't busy, that I did it once a day, and that I asked how your day was. I just wanted some water, Linda, while I'm sweating and busting my ass. I'm sorry if I disturbed your samples of drinks you have numerous times a day. The next one is an entitled people story. My son is learning to drive, so sometimes I finish up at work early and pick him up so he can drive home. Yesterday, the parking lot was fuller than usual, and this minivan kept driving around looking for a spot. They finally decided to squeeze in between me and the curb, barely adding up two inches from my passenger side mirror. Their child comes out, and this guy starts gesturing at me because obviously there is no way anyone is getting in either of our cars from the passenger sides. He rolls the window down and motions for me to do the same. The moment I do, he begins to berate me loudly and very aggressively, saying I should move from my spot so his kid can get in his car. Keep in mind, I'm in a parking spot, in a small car. He is in this big minivan squeezed into this non-space. I just rolled my window back up and ignored him. Then I feel a thump and look in my rearview mirror to see him walking back to his car. It legit felt like someone ran into me lightly. 
I didn't dare get out as I'm already a bit intimidated and the dude is obviously a bully after screaming at me to move for the past five minutes through a closed window. The guy pulls ahead, his kid gets in, and they leave. I get out of my car and go around to the back and see a massive crack in the bumper of my brand new car, right in the center of what looks like a boot print. This is my first new car ever, barely a month into my two-year lease. And this happens. I get a quote nearly $4,000 to fix the bumper as it needs to be replaced. It was kicked so hard it actually broke some clips that held it on too, and this was the recommendation of the dealership as it was very loose. Unfortunately, as a leased car, this has to be fixed ASAP according to my contract. I go back to the school in the hopes I can get some identifying info on the guy to file a report and recoup the cost through their insurance. We can clearly see the front of the van, but not the back where the license plate is because of where he is parked, ironically blocked from view by my car. Fast forward to today. I get to work, and my boss calls me into her office. There was a complaint made yesterday about how rude I was, and that I was most likely driving under the influence. My boss is awesome. She knows full well there's no way I would do any of that, so she just gives me a heads up, and that's it. It's almost 10 a.m., and I just answered a call it was him, asking if disciplinary action has been taken yet. I interconnected my line to my boss, so I had a witness, and the convo was interesting. He had no idea it was me and I was asking for details from the encounter. He gives them, not realizing I filed a police report the day before that wasn't likely to go anywhere as I had no license plate number or name. So I just got emailed, the guy's name, address, make, model, year of vehicle, license plate number. I just got off the phone with the police. I don't think he'll be happy to see them on his doorstep. Maybe he should have just been happy with vandalism instead of also trying to get me fired. Entitled People Suck. The next one is an entitled parent story, so... I am a 14-year-old male, and my family recently moved into a house in a new estate. This estate had a massive park. My house is on the main road of the estate, and its garage is on the other side, on another road, and we are close to the park. About two months ago, they hosted an opening ceremony for the park. A lot of people came, including folks from the surrounding areas. My brother, 18 years old, my parents and I left our house and walked down to the park. Due to all the traffic, there were people to manage it. Once we get there, we see a car parked in our driveway. My dad is a calm dude usually, but he doesn't like stuff like this. My brother and I go up to one of the workers and tell him that the car there isn't ours and we don't want it there. The worker tells us he saw the people park there and kind of remembers what they look like. We tell him that it would be good if we get the car moved. He says he will try to find her. About 20 minutes later, we see him walking up to the car with a lady and her son who look to be about nine. She walks up there, and we see her starting to get angry. Naturally, we walk up to see what's happening. This is the conversation that happened. Not 100% accurate, it's been a while. Karen, I don't understand why you want me to move my car. I live here. Worker. Well, they say that you don't, and I don't see why they would bring this issue here unless it was true. Karen, they are clearly lying. I live here. My brother. Ma'am, please. I live here, and I even have keys to the house. Please move your car. Karen. Bullcrap, complete bullcrap. I have lived here for a year and watched this park get built. Our house was finished five months prior to this. My brother, okay then, what two cars are inside the garage then? Karen, a Volkswagen and a Mazda. My brother, nope, a VW Jetta and a Hyundai i45. Karen, that's not true. I'll open the garage and show you. As she scuffles through her handbag, my brother opens the garage. My brother, there, that's the evidence. Closes the garage. Worker, It's not your house, so please leave. She gets in the car and leaves while looking very angry. We didn't think to call the cops because nothing major happened, but it was funny to see her lying out of her ass and getting proven wrong. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.